I'm David Batter. I am the coordinator of music and liturgy at St. Colum Kill. You know, it's ideal at Mass that we offer Eucharist under both forms, both body and precious blood. If you recall, and you've been around long enough, you know that um, we offer the precious blood in addition to the, uh, the host at all weekend Masses prior to COVID. Obviously, COVID had present, prevented us from um, continuing this practice. Now we'd like to begin to re-offer this uh, communion under both kinds at Masses. To do that, though, we need to have some training and uh, uh, Eucharistic ministers to help us to do that. We'll soon begin offering this at weekend Masses once per month for now. As we mandate more EMHCs, we plan to expand this offering. You know, it's been over two years since we offered the Precious Blooded Masses. The purpose of this brief video is to review the procedure um, of, of how to do that, and also knowing that we have newly mandated uh, EMHCs that have never distributed from the cup. To begin with, we're going to review some terms associated with the distribution and the receiving um, from the chalice. Secondly, we're going to review the stations for the distribution of the precious blood. And then thirdly, we'll actually review the actual uh, procedure of offering the chalice to communicants. Some vocabulary terms for us to remember. Many people uh, mistaken the chalice from the ciborium. The chalice is the vessel that holds the precious blood. The ciborium is the vessel that holds the hosts of the body. The purificator is the linen used to soak up any precious blood that's remaining on the rim of the chalice so that it isn't just left there. The credence table is that long table that is back in the uh, little niche um, next to the uh, chapel, around the corner from the deacon and priest chairs. That's the table on which all the vessels are placed before mass and many uh, items are returned to that table at, towards the end of mass. And then finally, what we call the work sacristy. The sacristy, of course, is the uh, room um, in which uh, vessels and books and all the supplies for mass are stored and kept and organized. At St. Columkill, we have two sacristies. Actually, we, the one we call the priest sacristy, which is where the priest and deacon and uh, servers vest and uh, many items are stored in that room. And then we have what we call the work sacristy, which is the room behind the sanctuary wall um, in which we also store other items back there. The uh, ciboria and the chalices are kept in this room. Recalling the procedure for the EMHCs to process forward, during the sign of peace at Mass, the EMHCs would go to the back of the church and purify their hands, and then line up in two rows, waiting to process forward. Just as soon as the host touches the priest's tongue, the two rows move forward, come around, and line up in one row parallel to the back wall in the sanctuary. The priest and the deacon would then distribute communion, both host and precious blood to each of the EMHCs. Remember that if you choose for any reason not to receive from the cup, to cross your arms as it is presented to you. The priest and deacon will then be distributing the vessels of either the ciborium of hosts or the chalice of precious blood with a purificator to each of the EMHCs. When ready, then the EMHCs and the priest and deacon would move to the appropriate station. When we offer the precious blood at Mass, there will be four stations offering the cup to the assembly. In this chart, the encircled letter C represents 
the four locations of the cup. The four standard bread stations are represented on this chart by the P and the D, the priest and the deacon, and the numbers one and two being one and two EMHCs. So the P and the D, the one and the two are the standard bread station locations. The four cup stations correspond to the four bread stations being offered there around the sanctuary steps. Each person distributing the host then has a partner distributing from the cup. And you can see that uh, diagram where those locations are. Please note that we ask that those EMHCs distributing from the cup not stand too close to their corresponding uh, person distributing from the host, as we want to allow a little, a little space so if one or two people are waiting to receive from the cup, that it doesn't crowd um, too much. For those of you who will be distributing from the chalice, remember that with the chalice of precious blood, you'll also receive a purificator. When presenting the uh, precious blood in the chalice to the communicant as they approach, remember to raise the chalice so that there is vision between you and the communicant when offering them the blood of Christ. You would never hold it down here and say to them the blood of Christ, but it would come up and you present to them saying the blood of Christ. At that point, then, you allow the communicant to take the chalice from you. It's important that you don't move quickly with the chalice for a couple of reasons. First of all, the precious blood may spill. But secondly, this is the presence of Christ. This is Christ himself. This is his blood. And so it is with awe and reverence that we move the chalice and offer it to the communicant. As well, it provides a model for the speed in which the communicant would take the cup. They wouldn't take it from you quickly. So it slows them down. Same thing when they offer it back to you, you move slowly to take the cup back. You wouldn't grab at it. So take it slowly and securely. Once you retrieve that, then the side on which they receive from the cup with the purificator, you rub away, as I'm showing you, both inside and outside rim to wipe away any precious blood or any re remnants of, of possible saliva, of course. Once you do that, turn the cup. I just, I just twisted it about one quarter turn before presenting to the next. The EMHC distributing from the chalice would continue to distribute until one of two things occurs. First of all, obviously that there would be no more communicants to receive from the cup. But also, watch the amount of precious blood remaining in the chalice. Once it is empty, um, you would be finished, even if there are other communicants waiting to come up. We would not be offering an empty um, uh, chalice to communicate, all right? And once that is the case, then you can uh, take the uh, purificator, place it over the chalice, or you can leave it in your hand either way and take the chalice um, back to the work sacristy, um, which is, you recall, through the uh, chapel door, past the credence table to the back work sacristy. Once there, um, there are two options. The EMHC may reverently consume the remaining precious blood, if there is any, or simply place the chalice and the, its purificator on the countertop so the deacon will then uh, consume any remaining precious blood immediately following Mass. At that point, then, the EMHC would, uh, would come back to the piano side, most likely, and return to their seat. If they're seated on the other side, on the uh, uh, the Creedence table side, you can go a little bit upstream and come around and be seated that way. A um, couple of things, a couple of reminders. 
Um, it's important that the EMHCs don't gather in the back and start chatting. Not that we don't want you to be friendly to one another, but we can hear that. Um, we can hear that it's easily heard, um, so it would be very distracting. And then also, um, we ask that EMHCs not gather by the piano, um, waiting to come out to their seat. Don't gather there because you'd be, be blocking the vision of the piano player who needs to see what's going on at the altar in terms of their timing to end communion. People have often asked, what happens if an accident occurs? If I spill some of the precious blood or if it spills onto the floor, what do I do? Well, the first thing is don't panic. No dramatic gestures, no sighs, oh, no running around because it creates attention to um, what just happened rather than taking care of the situation reverently. So the first thing you would do um, is to, uh, if, if uh, precious blood spills on the floor, you would take the purificator that you have in your hand and wipe it up. If it's sufficient, if the amount was small and that's sufficient, um, th then you would simply take the remaining precious blood in the purificator and take it back to the sacristy as if you were finished. That station would no longer be offering uh, precious blood. If there's more than just a, a little bit for that one purificator, then what you would do is that you would go back to, you would take the, the chalice and the purificator and take it back to the, uh, redo part of that. If more precious blood was spilled than the one purificator can easily soak up, then what you would do is ask a communicant that's nearby to stand there and uh, kind of guard the area so that people aren't stepping in the precious blood and, and spreading it around. Um, you could leave your purificator on top of the, of the spill momentarily. Take the chalice and uh, return it back to the sacristy because the station is, is done. You would no longer be offering precious blood at that station for the mass. Then in the work sacristy, in the cabinet, there are more purificators. Take a couple of purificators or how many you may need for the spill return back to the spot where you've asked the communicant to stand guard over, over the spill. Wipe up the remaining precious blood and soak it into the purificator so that it's no longer on the, on the, uh, the floor. And then take those purificators that have been soiled now with, with some precious blood back to the sacristy and leave them um, on the countertop near the chalices. I want to thank you for watching this brief video. Hopefully it's been helpful to you uh, as we reinstate the um, offering from the chalice, offering the precious blood of Jesus. It's good to be able to offer this precious blood, and it is not possible without your willingness to serve in this ministry. It's such a wonderful part uh, to serve as a vehicle of presenting the very presence of God to others in our parish. May God bless you in your continued work in our parish. May we all continue to become good people, the good people for which we were created. Be well. I will play for you.